Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at osmosis and to help us understand we're going to look at this little experiment that some of you may have seen, maybe not, but let's explain it. Here we've got something called visking tubing, it's a type of plastic tubing that has a specific property and that is that it is partially permeable. That means it will let some substances through but not others. Inside our tubing we have some sugar solution along with some orange food dye so we can see what happens in the experiment. So there's our sugar solution and this is all in a beaker of pure or distilled water. This is all connected to a glass tube over here. So there's a glass tube and that's connected to the visking tubing by some very tightly wound elastic band over here. We can leave this for a couple of hours and see what happens and there we go. What we notice is that the visking tubing has swollen and not only has it swollen but the sugar solution has moved upwards uh, up the glass tube. So why has this happened? This is because of the idea of osmosis. This is the definition of osmosis so it's the diffusion of water, diffusion of water from a dilute solution and by dilute we mean a solution that has lots of water in it so it's a you could say a watery solution and that just means it's got more water per given volume than a concentrated solution. A concentrated solution will have more solute dissolved in it. And this all happens through a partially permeable membrane. So this is the idea of osmosis. Let's take a look at another example of where this might happen. So in this example here, I've got a very simplified diagram of a plant cell. That's a simplified plant cell. And you can see in the diagram next to this diagram here, that's a more detailed version of a plant cell, what it might look like, but that's what I'm talking about when we talk about a plant cell. This is surrounded by a partially permeable membrane. I haven't drawn the cell wall in the simplified plant cell, but I've just drawn the partially permeable membrane surrounding that cell. Inside the cell, we've got a concentrated solution, a concentrated solution, in comparison to the outside and you can tell that because of the green solute particles compared to the blue water particles inside the cell. On the outside we have a dilute solution. It's much more dilute, a lot less solute molecules in that solution. We know that water moves from a dilute to a concentrated solution in osmosis. So in this example here what's going to happen is water is going to move into this cell. Solute molecules don't move because they're too large to get through the partially permeable membrane, but the smaller water molecules can get through the membrane. And this is why water moves in and the solute doesn't move out. So what would it look like? In this case, the cell would swell. It wouldn't burst because there's a cell wall on the outside, but it certainly would swell. And we say the plant cell has become turgid. That just means tightly packed full of water. So that's one example. We can look at what happens in the opposite direction. So if we had another diagram here, this time hopefully you can see that the dilute solution is on the inside of the plant cell and the more concentrated solution the more concentrated solution is on the outside. And if you're thinking ahead a little bit, you might realize that the water in this case would move out of this cell. And if you were to look at the result of that, we would see that the cell shrinks a little bit. It doesn't totally collapse because of the cell wall, but it shrinks a little bit. And in fact, we could describe it as being plasmalized. And that's because water's moved out. And in fact, the cell membranes moved away a little bit from the cell wall there. Okay, now what happens if we have the same concentration inside compared to the outside? If the two concentrations are the same, same concentration, if they're the same, as you can imagine, there would be no overall change in the cell. There would be no overall change, the cell will look the same. And in fact, we say there is no net movement of water. There's no net movement of water through osmosis because the two concentrations are the same. Okay, so this is the idea of osmosis and a couple of examples where you could explain what's going on with osmosis. Let's have a look at where we might see some other examples. So the first one is in root hair cells, root hair cells in the soil. That looks a little something like that. This is how water moves into plants. We also have other plant cells. We've kind of just talked about one there. So we've got other plant cells 
and they can be either turgid or not depending on how the water's moved but the turgid ones where it's fully packed with water helps to support the plant and keep it upright. We've also got animal cells that can be affected by osmosis but they will either burst or shrivel. They haven't got a cell wall so it might shrivel up uh, in a diagram like that or it might actually burst. There's no cell wall to stop it from bursting. Experiments with osmosis, they include experiments with potato, but it could be not just potato, it could be other plant tissue as well. Carrot, celery, whole range of other plant tissues. I've seen an experiment done with eggs where the outside of an egg, the shell is dissolved with acid, leaving a membrane with the yolk inside it, and that membrane is partially permeable. And you could do a whole range of experiments with that scenario there. And we have other examples where we might use visking tubing to demonstrate osmosis, as we saw right at the beginning of the video. Okay, so let's just uh, make that look a bit slightly better. But this has been the idea of osmosis, the definition, how it works, and a few examples of where you might see it in action. Okay, so that's us done for this video today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon.